it's always good to know how to make the primitive version of our more modern products, especially when it comes to something like rope and cordage. Now I've been using the reverse wrap method and some bulrushes to make natural cordage and I'm going to share how I do that. I'm Clarice, welcome to the Live Ready channel. Out of all the people who spend time in the wilderness, most of them don't actually know how to make natural cordage from natural materials. And often we wonder, but what could I actually use? And the simple answer to that is anything that has a flexible fibrous material. Whether you use the roots from pine trees or whether you use willow bark or whether you use anything else that you find works in your environment, as long as it is relatively flexible, it is wet, um, you've just harvested it or you've harvested it and stored it in some water um, and it allows you to bend and twist it like this you can use that to make cordage and it doesn't necessarily even have to be long pieces I basically use pieces as big as this from the bulrushes um, and I've just basically spliced them until I've gotten a piece of cordage this long I've got one seriously smoky fire here <laughs> So the ideal is basically for every person to go around their environment and try different materials for making cordage. Right, so bulrushes are actually a wonderful survival resource because they are also edible. So um, these heads from the bulrushes themselves are really pollenous heads and you can actually just break that off and use that as a flower substitute. The shoots are edible as well as the young leaves. So obviously this is not going to be particularly appetizing, but if you have some of the younger green leaves that come out the bottom or when they just start coming out the ground you can eat those too. So really good to know that you can use these they're really widely available and then we're going to make some cordage from this today as well. So the greener the leaves are the more of this fibrous stuff you have and the slower you peel the more of it you'll get and the longer your pieces of cordage will be without you actually needing to splice all the time. There's nothing wrong with splicing um, it does create slight weak spots in your cordage. It is better to offset the ends, which I'll show you just now, um, so that you don't have a weak spot on both sides of your cordage as you're weaving it. But um, the main issue with splicing, as you'd be able to see with this little piece that I did here, is that where you splice, your rope or your cordage becomes thicker. So if you're running it through something, then that can catch or provide a bit more resistance um, and it just doesn't look as neat. But it's still pretty strong cordage. Okay, so I reckon I've got enough here at least to demonstrate. Um, when you get to what would basically be the heartwood of um, the bulrush, you have a really nice straight piece of very soft wood that can be used for other purposes. So I can take this and I can fire harden it to make an arrow. Um, at the moment it's quite wet because I only harvested it this morning. Um, but here, yeah, it would make a pretty good arrow later on. So that's going to dry out first. And in the meantime, I'm going to make some cordage out of this stuff. To reverse wrap any sort of cordage or any sort of material is also great. If you have, for example, a piece of paracord that's frayed or rope that's frayed, that you want to rewind or rewrap. Um, reverse wrapping is really quite simple and it gives you quite strong cordage. So you can see this is a nice flexible piece um, of fibrous material that I've got here. If I wanted to store it and keep it for later, all I do is I keep it wet. So just store it in a bit of water. In order to start reverse wrapping it, fold it in half. The side is a little bit longer than the other side. It's okay if your one side is longer than the other because when you start splicing, you don't want to splice on both ends at the same time. You ideally want to splice where the one side is a bit longer so you don't have a weak spot on both sides. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to twist the one side so I'm going basically over to the right and I'm going to keep twisting until it starts to fold over on itself like that. It is good if you can get a whole lot of twists in there. And then once it folds over on itself, I'm going to pinch that. Twist, twist, twist. I usually do three or four twists 
and you can actually pinch it with your thumb just to make sure that it stays twisted and as soon as it's nice and tight I take that one and I swap them over so I basically reverse them and then I start twisting on this one one two three and reverse so I'm applying tension going this way and when I reverse it it pinches on itself and it prevents that tension from being released which is what gives me this nice little piece of cordage over here so I can keep going one two three reverse one two three reverse now as cordage dries especially natural cordage it tends to become a little bit more brittle so before you use it it is a great idea just to wet it again um, or even to maintain it wet until the point where you start using it for something. Once you've tied it off onto something where you've made knots in it or you've used it to build a shelter, you can leave it there to dry. Two, three, and reverse. Okay, and you can see I'm starting to get a nice little piece of cordage. And if I'm unsure whether I'm doing it right, if I let go on all sides of my cordage, it should remain um, folded or wrapped. So it shouldn't undo itself if I let go. And so I can continue to make cordage until I've got enough for whatever purpose I need it for. Um, it's actually quite a nice camp chore, um, quite therapeutic, um, I must admit. And it's, it's quite rewarding as well to see the cordage come out. Um, it looks really neat too. And then being able to use the things that you've made yourself in the wilderness for everyday tasks or for everyday things around camp is really nice. Three, reverse. So all I'm doing is twisting on the one side, then taking my hand, grabbing the other, and then twisting it around. Okay, I'm pinching it there until I manage to twist this side again, and reverse. Twist, 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 grab it there, reverse, twist, try and keep it neat, two, three, and reverse. And you can twist as many times as you think, just don't twist the fibers off. And if you start to feel like your fibers are getting a little bit dry, then go ahead and just wet them again, or soak it in water for um, 10 or 15 minutes and then continue um, making your cordage. The reason I've chosen bulrushes for this is just to show you that you don't actually need to find a tree um, in order to make natural cordage. Very often we think well if you want to make natural cordage you've either got to find long roots or you've got to find like long whippy willows or something like that but you can actually just use the grass in the environment. Anything that is relatively wet and fibrous is going to give you cordage. So this is starting to get a little thin, this is starting to get a little short, so I'm going to splice this again. This is nice and sticky and because I know I've been doing it right I can actually let that go and I can even straighten it out a little bit so that I get nice straight cordage and the tension is equal all over. Then I can get myself something to splice with, so this is a little thick, it's a little gooey as well which tells me that it's nice and wet, um, so it will work for splicing. And I can use that for example um, and I can use multiple strands like this too I don't have to just use this thin one I can use another one from here to splice to splice again I don't want it exactly in um, halfway I kind of want it to be offset a little bit so I'm going to give the longer end to this side and I'm going to give the shorter end to that side uh, what's a little thicker this is a little thicker so I'm also considering what's thicker, what's thinner, so that the strands in my cord um, is relatively even. So I'm going to splice it like that. Maybe like that. And I'm just adding this on here at a bend. Okay. And I'm just going to continue as I was before. Twist, 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 and reverse twist, 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 and reverse, twist, twist, twist. The more tension I put there on that twist when I reverse it, the more it's going to bite on itself there. Two, three, reverse. And the more fibrous this material is, the more I struggle to actually get it to twist and to bite on itself. 
Guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the Live Ready Patreon page. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, also gives you access to the Live Ready Discord server. If you're looking to be part of a community of like-minded people who share your same interests, then go ahead and join us there. The Patreon page also helps me to continue making videos such as this one for you guys. It supports the Live Ready platform. And thank you so much to all of my patrons. I appreciate every single one of you. Right, so I've got a decent length of cordage here. Um, I'm starting to feel this is a little bit brittle, so I'm going to start needing to add something on here that is flexible again. As you get to the ends of the fibers, this stuff will become more brittle and this is a little bit more flexible. Um, so find the flexible stuff then again and start adding that on and splicing as you go. I hope this goes on your list of essential survival skills. Remember to hit like and subscribe, leave a comment before you go and until the next time, live ready.